This video will detail the process of backing up and restoring your Forcepoint DLP environment. It is important to ensure that your DLP backups are running on a schedule and are valid when they are being taken, as they can be used to recover to a working state in case something goes wrong on the environment. Although DLP backups are primarily intended to be used on the same environment on which the backup was taken, they can also be used for DLP manager migrations if needed. In order for the backup to function, the temporary backup and archive location within the DLP installer must be configured and connectable. In addition, the backup path must be set within the DLP UI. Configuring the temporary backup and archive location is present within the DLP installer. On the DLP Manager server, log in as the service account running DLP services and run a modify of Forcepoint DLP. There you will find the temporary file location screen. This screen is only necessary for non-SQL Express environments, but otherwise fill this out as needed and ensure that the connection test passes. You will need to establish a shared folder on the network that is reachable by both the SQL Server and the Forcepoint Management Server. It will be used as a temporary holding ground for backup files taken from the SQL Server of the database or certain tables when an archive is performed. If there are issues setting up the temporary folder location, try setting the folder to be shared with everyone through read and write as a test. Additionally, if you are using a specific SQL account, try using the SA account to see if that passes as that might suggest an issue with SQL permissions. For more information, please go to the article mentioned on this page. On the DLP web interface, ensure that the backup location has been configured under General and Backup. Once the backup location and the temp folders have been set, enable the backup task within the Windows Task Scheduler. By default, the backup runs every Sunday, but for the purposes of this video, we will be running it manually here. This will start the backup process within the backup folder specified on the UI. In order to monitor the backup process, you can open cpsbackup.log, which is located within the DOP installation directory. Give the backup some time to complete, as this may take some time depending on the size of your database and the amount of forensics if you choose to include them. Once the backup has completed, you will see a line stating that the backup has been completed within cpsbackup.log and also databackup.log located within the backup directory itself. In the case of SQL database migrations, it is important that the SQL database is located in the exact same path as it was when the backup was taken. This can be confirmed through the SQL Management Studio. In the SQL Management Studio, open the Restoration menu for the database, but do not actually start it. Here we will select the DLP database backup that was taken within the DLP backup within the MNGDB folder. Once this is selected as a file, click on the Files tab on the left pane to check the file paths. Ensure that these paths match. If the paths do not match, detach the existing database and attach it to the expected location. Restoring the DLP backup is as simple as running a modify of DLP again and selecting the option to restore when prompted. The restoration process will take some time depending on the size of your database and the amount of forensics to consider. Once the restoration has completed, log into the web UI and perform a deployment. Once the deployment has finished, the restoration process on your DLP manager has been completed.